All right, I get it. I really do. <clears throat> Listen, it happened to me back in the 90s when Jeff Speakman's uh, The Perfect Weapon came out. I saw the movie. I was blown away by it. I researched uh, Kempo Karate. Uh, I learned that Jeff Speakman was a, he went to high school at Hersey High School, which was a couple towns over from mine. And I was like, holy shit, I got to learn this art. I didn't find a Kempo school that was close to me. And I went, all right, whatever. And then later on in life, I found Wing Chun. And thank God I did. Here's the deal. You just saw the Ip Man movie. You're excited. You're jacked up. You want to learn Wing Chun. Fantastic. I'm going to give you the breakdown of what I think is essential. What you do before you fuck up your martial arts journey. You take Wing Chun. You somehow apply Wing Chun. You get disheartened with Wing Chun. And then you go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and go, oh dear God, I should have taken this to begin with. Number one, listen to me carefully, very carefully. I don't know how much more I have to say this. If you can't stand on your feet, you wind up on the ground, right? And staying on your feet is all about balance. Even the concept of walking is a series of controlled falls forward, right? So you're balanced as you walk forward. Well, standing on your feet takes a bit of balance. We learn it as we're toddlers and we progress it all the way through life and then we lose that ability through motor skills as we age. It's why people need canes when they get older or why wheelchairs and walkers, right? Balance. Where do you have the perfect balance? On the ground. End of story. So before anybody compares anything, and I'm not discrediting ground fighting because don't forget where I started my career, I'm saying when you take balance out of the equation and all things equal, of course, if you remove one component, another art in context is going to be superior. I, I'm not denying that. Do we have that out of the way? Are we agreeance on that? Good. Assuming you could stay on your feet, here's the deal. Wing Chun is my preferred favorite martial art. I started out as a collegiate wrestler, wrestled all through my adolescence, through high school, college, uh, loved it, absolutely loved it. Continued to coach in my 20s and early 30s, or yeah, mid 30s, and uh, then found Wing Chun in 1998 by accident. I boxed for a little bit, found Wing Chun, was like, this is amazing, I gotta do this, this is fantastic. So I've been doing Wing Chun exclusively with a wrestler's mindset since 1998. I'll say that again. I've been doing Wing Chun, Ip Man lineage, I've talked about my lineage, trained under the Sam Kwok lineage, I've trained under the Simon Lau lineage, um, I, I absolutely with a ground fighter, with a wrestler's mindset. I hope that makes sense as we go forward. That said, obviously, I didn't like boxing. I didn't like that. I loved living in wrestling space. Wing Chun lives in wrestling space, lives in grappling space. When you go and explore your Wing Chun, this is the biggest thing I have to tell you right now, guys, very simply. The center line punch is everything. It's the entire system. It's putting the, uh, the punch on your uh, fist on your chest, projecting it from the elbow, understanding the relationship between the wrist and where the energy comes out, how that relates to your shoulders, your hips, your spine, your ankles, your knees, your ground, your, your rooted stance. From day one, learning that centerline punch until the rest of your career, take your time to study that. Because if you really do that, if you understand how the centerline punch applies to the rest of you, you'll unlock everything in Wing Chun. That's the greatest big of advice I can give you right there. Um, very simply put, when you explore in your Wing Chun, understand this too. Guys, you're going to go in it, you're going to learn it. And you're going to think you're Donnie Yen, and there's two two types of it. Do you want to be the Donnie Yen, the stuff you saw in the movies? Or do you want to learn how to use it to fight so that every other YouTuber out there who critiques it goes, oh, Wing Chun is bullshit. Well, yeah, it, it's bullshit because people can't fucking make it work. I didn't see Wing Chun in that fight. If you saw Wing Chun, it wasn't Wing Chun. If you saw it and the guy got his ass kicked, he was trying to do movie Wing Chun. And I've talked about this for years, and we can all get in debate on this. End of story. It's just Wing Chun is not meant to, to look. You're supposed to get in do your damage, win the fight, okay? So think about that for a second. Um, commit yourself. You don't go to a job and in like the first two, three weeks do the job and then all of a sudden say, oh my God, I'm great at this. You have to give yourself a minimum, minimum five years training your Wing Chun every single day. 
could be the center line punch, could be all your forms, could be uh, shadow boxing, could be doing your tan punch, bong wu, gan sao, bong sao, to punch, anything. It doesn't make a difference. When you're doing it every single day, it becomes a part of you. Think of any other skill you've learned over life, like driving, walking, writing. It has taken you years to master it. So why should martial arts be any different? So please, if you're going to do this, commit to it commit to it, commit to it. That said, don't make the mistake of committing to the wrong thing. Um, it's not bad mouthing. It's my opinion. And I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. Here's the deal. And, and again, I'm not looking to spark any shit, but I'm going to lay it out to what my experience has been over the last several years, because you would ask, who should I go to? Who should I go to? Who should I go to? Stay away from William Chung's lineage, which is the traditional Wing Chun, which is copywritten. In my opinion, it is ineffective and it's about as good as kickboxing. If you want to learn kickboxing, go learn William Chung's lineage. You'll learn to dance around. You just, and again, watch, watch Chi Sao, okay? Because everybody loves the Chi Sao. You can tell somebody good at Chi Sao who never backs up. And again, that's that's Chi Sao with full pressure on. So there's always two, there's three sides every coin. There's the, the one, the head side, the tail side, and then the edge. When you do Chi Sao in, in application delivering your skill set to your partner, you shouldn't back up. You should be driving that motherfucker back into a wall or to a point where they can no longer move. You invade their space, you eat their space, control their space, and you dominate their fucking space. That's Wing Chun. When you see guys doing Wing Chun and or Chi Sao and, and the dominant guy is constantly backing up to evade what uh, the, the attack that's coming forward, that's bullshit Chi Sao. That's Chi Sao is somebody who's avoiding pressure. I mean, they're absorbing it by backing up, but... Pick any any landscape whatsoever in a context of a fight, that guy's gonna wind up on his back and wishing he knew Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, and that I see that a lot in the William Chung lineage, including the blind side concept, which they apply or, or parallel to boxing. Yes, it works in boxing because you're looking at the concept of guys who are gloved, guys who move for a living in that aspect. They're not looking at smothering, they're looking at a boxing technique. And in my opinion, it's not the Wing Chun you wanna learn. Um, Leung Ting's lineage. If anybody came from Keith Kernspet's lineage, like an Eamon Bostepi, a Norbert Mayday, a uh, Victor, uh, I think Victor Gutierrez, uh, even uh, Steven Sifu Sergio, um, even though he's, Sifu Sergio has, has delved so deep into Wing Chun, I think he's like the, he, he's like the, the, the historical archive keeper of Wing Chun. So he's got so many different caveats and views, it's going to overwhelm you. And you would need about 20 years to study with him as far as I'm concerned. But then again, too, your journey would be much different. Um, so if you're under those lineages, and there's quite a, a few other guys who came from that lineage, and I know I'm missing them. Uh, Chris Collins. Chris Collins, who is in the movie Ip Man uh, 4, if you get a chance to learn from that son of a bitch, you better fucking learn from that son of a bitch. I have loved that guy's stuff for years, and I'm so glad he was in that movie. Um, Wai Zhang Peng, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Jai Harman's Sifu. If there was one person on this planet I could pay to train with, it would be those two guys. Those two guys. They get it. They understand it. They have applied it. They have put it to work, and it has not ended well for the person that was out there. Um, there's been documentaries on, I think it's, is it Wai Zhang or is it Wang Zhang I'm sorry. I know I'm mispronouncing uh, it. He's been in documentaries, but if you look up Jai Harmon, J-A-I Harmon, he's overseas in the UK. Uh, that son of a bitch is ruthless and that's fantastic Wing Chun. Um, you have to find somebody who's got a mindset. Somebody who's got a mindset who isn't going to say, well, by the time you get to level 12, you can be this. And by the time you get to level 27, you can get this. If you are studying in those kind of lineages and you understand that there's a program that's going involved, it's up to you to discern what is applicable for you and what's not and when it's time to leave and when it's time to stay. It's not bad. If you choose to become a master of those systems, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. If you're looking to fight, no, it's not it. Uh, I'm very partial, impartial. Um, the Indiana, Indianapolis Wing Chun crew and the Naptown Wing Chun crew, Clint Cloys, Casey Couch, uh, Sean McGuire. Sean years ago was a running joke when we all started doing videos. Sean never wanted to be on videos. He was very quiet. Now he's putting out videos almost uh, daily and weekly. Um, if you ever got a chance to train with those three guys, I am biased. They are very dear to me. They are very close to my heart. 
those are the men you also want to check out. And again, I'm going to glance over a bunch of people who you should train with, shouldn't train with, but the two lineages I think that you should be very leery of are the Lung Ting lineage, only because there's good aspects of it, and then there's bad aspects of it. Norbert Mayday, you couldn't pay me to fuck with him. Uh, even Bo's Tepe in his prime would tear the shit out of anybody. I think even Norbert Mayday is, is a bigger badass. Victor Gutierrez, I mean, holy shit, dude. Those guys, they understood a lot of the concepts of relaxation applying into forced uh, pressure and fighting. Um, a lot of people over the years have tried to find the, uh, the secret sauce when it came down to... Ah, oh, crap. What was his name? Ah, I'm going to forget it. I'm going to forget it. It was apply, It was what applied Wing Chun is now. So Duncan Leung's lineage, when it was uh, uh, taught um, to a couple guys out here in the so southern Illinois, you know, you could... Um, you can go search on YouTube for those videos and Applied Wing Chun has taken its, its, its lineage. It's aggressive, it's violent, it's good, but where it is now today, especially taught by some schools, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, Doc Savage, I have talked to him a couple times personally. Doc Savage is a good fucking reference for authentic Wing Chun in that lineage. So I would absolutely endorse him as well too. Um, but here's the deal. You got to get somebody who knows how to get their hands dirty, somebody who uh, is, is knows the concept of fighting, pressuring, going forward, and eating the shit out of somebody's space to where even if it turns into a grappling context, uh, their Wing Chun still is evident. I mean, if you're touching hands with them and they're overwhelming you and you're like, what the fuck is this? That's something you need to look into. But other than that, Wing Chun will always stay ineffective if you're only applying it to other people with Wing Chun. And again, over the years, you know, I didn't, I don't, I don't go out and pick fights with people, but you know, it, it was always something to where, especially when I was a cop, you know, you put your hands on somebody's shoulder, you put your hands on somebody's, uh, shake their hands. When, when, when you understand the context of sensitivity and how it relates to the rest of your body, even when you're relating to another human being on any level whatsoever, you know, a hug to a loved one, uh, a handshake to a new guy you're meeting, taking somebody into custody if you're a cop or a doorman, you feel what it does to the rest of your body. And that's in called invisible Wing Chun. That's stuff that your teacher or your Sifu can never teach you. You have to understand that is you, you have to listen to what they're saying, apply it, and I'm going to give you this number one. You want to learn Wing Chun authentic, authentically in your school, authentically, you find the top student, you befriend them, you pick their brain. Because the top student is always looking to prove they're the top student and they're looking to boast and gloat and show off and show you what they know. Teachers are going to guard the rice bowl so you don't get better than them and they don't lose your business. Trust me, I know exactly how that went. So uh, the point is, is over time, you'll start to apply it, put it towards yourself and you'll discover Wing Chun on your own. But I, I mean, it's we've been, I've been on YouTube now. Not so much in Wing Chun because I got a real bad taste in my mouth the last three, four years. And it's like I had a, I had a personal falling out with Wing Chun and I, I keep saying I'm going to return to it. And, you know, the, the, the Ip Man bug did bite me. And I am like, I miss this. I miss doing these videos and all this kind of stuff. I miss putting it out there. But in the last, you know, seven years or whatnot, since we've all been talking about this, seven, eight years, um, it's still the same. Wing Chun doesn't work in a fight. This is why Bruce Lee left this. Who would win in a fight, Bruce Lee or Mike Tyson? It's the same fucking shit left and right. Guys, it all boils down to you. If you have the mindset that's proper and you are able, able to savagely, I'm talking fucking ruthlessly, savagely, you know, take Wing Chun and make it work for you, then you have authentic Wing Chun. And then not to mention the fact, the fuck do you give a shit about what anybody's saying, including me? including me. If you're a member of the William Chung lineage or or, uh, uh, or whatever his name is, um, uh, Lung Ting lineage, and you're like, well, fuck this Izzo guy doesn't know what he's talking about, why, my opinion shouldn't matter to you. It really shouldn't. I'm giving my opinion out because that's what we all do. So you asked and I'm, I'm offering that. But the biggest thing, the two biggest things I can actually tell you right off the bat is if you're looking at getting to Wing Chun, number one, you have to commit a minimum of five years. You have to understand that there's going to be times when you're going to be so pissed off and confused. And I almost quit the art four times when I was first learning. I'm like, fuck this. I'm done. I can't even do a tonsil right. And it was and it was like in year three, I'm like, ah, oh, pissed off at this. The forms started to piss me off. The forms didn't make sense. Then they made sense. It was year three. Year three, going through the motions and Selim Dow, the first form, clicked. And I went, holy shit. And I'd been doing the same 108 movements for three years at that point. And at that time, I'll never forget it. I'm in my condo. It's quiet. I used to like to do the form before I went to bed. It's nice and quiet. It's night outside. I do the form. And I'm like, oh my God. And it made everything open up. And I've had several moments like that throughout my Wing Chun career. So 
as you move forward, keep in mind, it's essential, that this stuff will take time and it will reveal itself to you when you have processed it and assimilated it. You don't go into to fitness losing look 60 pounds in a day, do you? You don't go into the gym looking to put on 20 pounds in a month, do you? It takes time if done right. You didn't go to driver's ed and learn how to fucking drive a car and do a three-point turn or a parallel park in your first six weeks. It took you time. So give yourself that. And number two, that centerline punch. And you guys know I'm not a Bruce Lee fan, but something he did say, which is 100% accurate, and I agree with him, is when he first started learning Wing Chun, a punch was just a punch. Then after several days, weeks, months, years of training, a punch it wasn't just a punch anymore. A punch was a lot different. A punch meant something different. Then, after years and days and months and weeks after that, a punch was just a punch again. That one single motion, if you actually break it down into the relationship with the rest of your body and who's ever standing in front of you, I can guarantee you, you will have a better understanding of Wing Chun than anyone else out there. Learn what that punch means, learn what it means to your opponent, learn what it means to you, and then learn what it does not mean. Other than that, if you're going out there, there's a lot of good people out there. I know I'm missing people like Russ Sichon, uh, up who's north of me. Um, uh, 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 God, there, there's just a ton of people out there that I would suggest you guys train with. And I'm not, I'm not neglecting anybody for the sake of it. And what happens always is I turn the videos off and I'm like, fuck, I forgot about this guy. There's, there's a lot of good people and there's a lot of shit people. But in my opinion, you know, I'm 45 years old, been doing Wing Chun since 1998. I was 23 at the time. I love it. I've been in love with it. I will never leave it for me. There's no reason to study anything else because Wing Chun has everything. It has everything. And if you actually study enough, you'll discover it. Oh, it doesn't have ground fighting. Guys, it fucking has ground fighting in there. Everything has, even, even ground fighting has stand-up applications if you pay attention to it. It's, it's the human body. It's all about the human body. It's just, are you making balance easier for you by laying completely flat on the ground and using all of your body as balance? Or are you standing up on your feet and now you're accountable for one more thing that you have to be responsible for, which is not getting on the ground in the first place? That's it. End of story. I look forward to talking and doing more Wing Chun with you guys. I hope this helped. But if you saw Epmon 4 and you got a passion for it, follow your passion. Fuck the naysayers. Stay off YouTube. Don't look at this person. Don't look at that person. You will confuse yourself. But if you are okay with confusing yourself, then fine. It's your job to find out what works and doesn't. And if you go to your Sifu, understand something. Be respectful. Be respectful. Don't go if you're in a William Chung lineage and uh, look at something that, uh, that Long Ting Lineage did and say, well, they did this, Sifu. Pull them off to the side later on and say, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Don't do it in class. Don't just say, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I saw this. This is confusing me. Could you explain to me what your views are on this? I want to follow what your thoughts are. And if you have a good Sifu, he will explain it. If you don't have a good Sifu, it's because they're threatened and they just don't understand it. And trust me, guys, there's a lot of guys out there who are truly, truly bad at teaching and they purposely lead you down the wrong path because it's all about money. And it is. End of story. All right, that's it. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you wind up clicking that bell. Make sure you put comments in the comment section about what you would like me to talk about as far as Wing Chun goes. Uh, I do read your comments. If I don't reply, I don't reply. But again, once as always, this is for me. This is my Wing Chun. It is what has benefited for me over the last uh, 23 years now. And I have no intention on stopping because it is uh, the, one of the biggest loves of my life. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.